So not too long ago, I did a video talking about the Session Instant Messaging platform, which seeks to be an open source, uh, privacy friendly, but also user friendly platform for people to communicate um, effectively. And there was a criticism leveled at it, which is leveled at a lot of these instant messaging platforms, uh, is that there just aren't people on it. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter if you can build the most, you know, the, the best uh, instant messaging platform, the easiest to use, the most uh, privacy and end user respecting. But if people just aren't using it, if there aren't people to talk to on it, then it seems to become a little bit redundant. Now, I don't necessarily see this as, as um, you know, sort of, overly devaluing the platform because I think the exercise is worthwhile in itself to develop and and, and uh, understand methods to actually you know create software that is end user respecting uh, in terms of, of privacy and, and freedom and all that kind of stuff but at the end of the day it doesn't actually necessarily solve the problem if you've got a really good instant messaging uh, platform that no one uses. Um, it's like having the nicest car in the world but not knowing how to drive. It's just, you know, it's there but it's not uh, sort of reaching its full potential. So one of the uh, ways that I always like when the open source community um, sort of manages to overcome this is by developing improvements to existing infrastructure and existing uh, solutions in what you might sort of perceive as, as rather hacky ways but ways in which um, actually affect people and actually get out there and, and one example that I, I used uh, quite some time ago I would say this is perhaps a less hacky solution is that uh, while the um, Signal instant messaging client, which is actually quite well known, but still not massively widely used, is open source. The um, encryption algorithm has been used by countless other instant messaging platforms, so open source software is still benefiting people en masse, even if... Um, it's you know we don't have the overall platform itself we still have actually managed to make it more freedom and privacy respecting for the end user which i think is really good um, and it is a victory it's just not a perfect victory i would say um, and one another good example of this is in fact delta chat delta chat uses email but it fashions it into an instant messaging uh, style and it also provides end-to-end uh, -end encryption and while this isn't perfect there are uh, perhaps some issues with things like metadata um, and of course um, you know there are of course many people who do use for example Google services which are perhaps less privacy respecting it's still a massive uh, improvement over nothing at all um, and it also then allows more flexibility um, for the users involved, like everyone has their own uh, privacy needs and requirements and there there is no one-size-fits-all solution. But to bring open source solutions and bring the open source philosophy to um, existing platforms I think can be really, really worthwhile. And also, um, please bear in mind, when I do say open source solutions, I am uh, sort of leaning more into free software solutions than actual open source solutions. I'm just saying open source because it's what sort of rolls off the tongue, I suppose. So anyway, today I am talking about Silence. Now, Silence is an application available in the uh, F-Droid Store, in the uh, Google Play Store, and I can, uh, I can, I've got it up here for you now. But here's the uh, F-Droid in the, uh, here's the uh, Silence in the F-Droid Store with all of its uh, information, and here it is in the Play Store here. Uh, there isn't too much to actually show you, but I do have the website here. Need some privacy. Silence encrypts your text messages over the air and on your phone. So um, it gives you a few uh, a few uh, selling points here. It's easy. Silence works like any other SMS application. There's nothing to sign up for and no new service your friends need to join. That's quite important. Silence recommends using encrypted SMS messages. No servers or internet connection required. Good. Silence provides end-to-end -end encryption for your messages using painstakingly engineered signal. Hmm. Encryption protocol. All messages are encrypted locally, so if your phone is lost or stolen, your messages are protected. And of course, Silence is free and open source software, enabling anyone to verify its security by auditing the code. Uh, they've got some security. They're on Mastodon, and I do tend to sort of lean into the if and application is of it hasn't a mastodon instance that it tends to be quite sincere towards its free and open source uh, commitments and 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 sincere towards its philosophy that's always a good sign not necessarily the the be all and end all but certainly something i i always quite like to see 
Uh, you can support it with Bitcoin, and it has a, a warranty canary right down there at the bottom. So it seems to be very transparent, seems to be very straightforward, and it's something I've been using now for, for quite some time, actually. I'm surprised I haven't made a video about this uh, sooner. Uh, I've got it on my phone, and for those of you that are wondering, yes, it does have a dark mode. In fact, for quite some time, I was just using it as my standard SMS uh, client because the one that came, the stock one that came with my phone, just didn't have. Um, it, it just didn't have uh, a dark mode, and, and that's almost one reason. I know it's a bit silly, and of course it being open source and in the F-Droid store, of course, is, uh, is, is important to me as well. Now, um, you do need to have like two people with the signal, um, the silence uh, client for it to actually work, for it to actually be encrypted, but if you have the silence client and someone else doesn't, then you still use it as a standard SMS client, and it's still, it's still open source software in action. Um, but yeah, to get its full um, encryptions, you know, uh, to, to get the encrypted end-to-end -end encryption, you do need both people to have silence. It is just a matter of downloading and installing, and there is, like they say, nothing to sign up for and no, you know, T's and C's and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it does, yeah, it does use uh, SMS, so you're not necessarily beholden to the internet. It's it's all well and good to have um, all these uh, these internet reliant clients, but um, yeah, it's, it's got something SMS. Like um, everyone, you know, everyone I know is on SMS, um, which is uh, which is really useful. So you're still using and supporting privacy respecting software, even if you're not always using the end-to-end -end encryption. And again, when it comes to things like privacy requirements, there is no one size fits all. And I think that's a, a deeper philosophical discussion as to whether or not you know you always need everything to be encrypted all the time. Um, every day. Now, you know, one argument is yes, because it normalizes the behavior of encryption. Uh, what you don't want is is whenever you're, um, you know, whenever you're 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 in, um, you know, whenever you require privacy, uh, to start then using end-to-end -end encryption because then it, uh, it 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 makes it, it feeds into an air of suspicion. Whereas if it's just the casual thing, the day-to-day. Um, usage of of end-to-end of -end encryption, it just makes uh, privacy a standard value in in, in online society and and, and the day-to-day -day running of things, which I think is is probably a really valid point. Um, but of course, um, it's uh, always very difficult to get end users and non-techy people to actually um, uh, to, to sort of uh, to to sort of. Um, think it through I guess um, I, you know I don't want to necessarily sound sort of like too elitist but there are some like um, or, or, or sound a little bit too academic but the, you know there are a lot of like historical examples of why things like encryption and uh, having privacy respecting software and and being careful about this kind of stuff uh, is important because you know there have been um, and still are massively oppressive uh, regimes regimes across the world that will you know sort of uh, invade people's privacy in, in, you know, for someone like me who who is, you know, broadly pretty privileged, and I don't really have anything to hide. But if I was, for example, a, a, a um, LGBT activist in Egypt, then I definitely would. And those people, you know, they deserve to organise, and I think they deserve to to fight for their rights. I think they deserve to have their rights, quite frankly. But you know, this is this is the kind of thing. It's like why why I kind of feel that people in a position of safety, such as myself, should then sort of continue to support software that can then help people who aren't in a position of safety. And that's one of the reasons why I, I kind of think stuff like this is, is at least important to support and at least important to develop because it does allow people, uh, you know, people of privilege to help people who don't have it. And I, I think that, you know, it, it's almost the duty of the strong to protect the vulnerable. And this is an example of, of how it happens. Um, so uh, anyway, that sort of uh, political tangent aside, this is a really good example of how you can actually bring end-to-end -end encryption and privacy respecting software into the lives and use cases of people who aren't necessarily as technically savvy as us. And um, and also it's a pretty good client in its own right. So if you guys are in fact in the market for a good SMS client, uh, then I would like to suggest uh, Silence. I've been using it now for mm, year, well, a year since I've had my smartphone, but even when I had my smartphone after my time on the uh, old Nokia 3310, I think I used it. And again, no problems. It's better than the standard stock um, SMS client, and uh, on, on Android at least. And um, yeah, I had a good time with it. And of course, it's in the uh, in the F-Droid store. And I think, again, it does show a good degree of sincerity towards free and open source uh, values when a piece of software is brought into the uh, into the F-Droid store. So yeah, go and... Uh, 
go and check it out if you so wish. It's available silence.im. I will, of course, link to it in the description below. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it from me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And um, yeah, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.